Here we have a technological artifact that could not be replicated until the 20th century. This is the Lycurgus cup. Kyrgyz was the lawgiver of Sparta, and Lycurgus wanted the Spartans to be tough, and so he banned wine. And here is the god Pan punishing him by having vines attack Lycurgus for his sin of outlawing you know, the sacred liquid. But the interesting part here is that this is a single cup. It's a dichromic cup, which means that if you shine light from the front, it's going to be green, and if you shine light from the back, it's going to be red. This is achieved through very finely ground particles of silver and gold at the nanometer scale, mixed in precise quantities into the glass itself. When this cup, before this cup was found in the 18th century, in those 13% of remaining writing, there were references to cups like this. And 18th and 19th century scholars said, oh, the Romans are being fanciful. Of course, they don't have cups that change color. That's ridiculous. We don't have cups that change color. And then they found one of these in a monastery in, uh, I think, France, late 19th century, and they had no idea how it worked. And then uh, a lab in 1970s Britain figured out how it worked. And the lab is very insistent that this must have been some kind of fluke, that they definitely didn't know what they were doing. And you know, think about how many cups are produced. What are the odds that we would have a fluke preserved rather than something that was mass produced? Mass produced items are things we find. If today our civilization ends, we would not have, future archaeologists would not find the Saturn V. They would not find the Apollo rocket. They would find jet airplanes, but that's because they're mass produced, there are many copies, and because of the large quantity, probabilistically, even a few centuries or thousands of years later, one of them is preserved and may be found. They would find the lunar module. That's a good point. But then they would have to go to the moon. And you know, when the ancients say that they went to the moon, they're being fanciful. We all know the Americans never went to the moon. <laughs> so the Lycurgus cup was an example of a technology that was lost for over a thousand years. Note it was also produced in the fourth century AD. The fourth century AD is already pretty far along this decline trend line. So it's a very small economy compared to its peak. We can measure part of the economic output of the Roman Empire through atmospheric lead. Lead goes into the atmosphere, the winds blow it over the ocean in the Atlantic, and it settles on the ice of Greenland. And over this layer, new ice is formed. In the small air bubbles trapped in Greenland ice, there is a sample of the atmosphere, including its lead content, which is basically pollution for hundreds, if not thousands of years into the past. And when we analyze these, we find a massive decline in Roman production. And as you can see, it's an ongoing decline rather than a sudden crash. And the internal story of the Roman Empire was that, yeah, we've had some bad times, but everything is great now. Like over and over again, the political propaganda insists that things are looking up, that the economic outputs are going to improve, that political stability is around the corner.